discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe Treasury Stock. So if we see an essay question like this or a discussion question like this, we may first want to identify the type of entity for which Treasury Stock would be applicable. And we are, again, the, the key here is we're talking about stock and therefore we're talking about a corporation. Note that if we're in a, a course or in a chapter where we're dealing with corporations, of course, we would just assume we're talking about corporations. But if we see this type of questions and these types of things, just in general for accounting questions as a whole, then it's important for us to distinguish what type of entity we're talking about when it is applicable. There's gonna be a lot of things that'll be the same from entity to entity. Some will differ. And we need to be able to recognize those types of questions that are clearly focusing in on those areas that differ. We here focusing in on corporations are focusing solely, mostly on the areas that differ. So treasury stock will be a form of stock. So it's gonna be related to a corporation, stocks being a form of ownership for a corporate type of entity, not so for a sole proprietor or a partnership. So first we, we kind of want to decide, okay, what is treasury stock? Maybe compare and contrast it to a typical type of stock, a common stock, and then discuss what, you know, how would it be recorded possibly? What does it do to the equity section? And uh, why might a company want to do it? So treasury stock just basically represents, and this is one of the most confusing concepts of a, of a corporation or type of stock. It doesn't happen all the time, and that's why it's a, a little confusing as well. But it would be the corporation, is in essence, purchasing their own stock back off of the stock market. In other words, we are reacquiring our stock. So if we think of something like Google or something that has you know, stocks that they issued on the stock market, anybody can buy and sell stocks on the stock market from other traders. So if, when, when, whenever we go on the market, if we buy Google stock, we're not buying from the company, typically. We're buying from other people trading stocks. Now the corporation itself can go back into the stock market and buy stocks back from uh, other traders themselves. So they're rebuying their own shares that they had previously issued onto the market. So that's going to be a treasury stock. It's a bit confusing to buy our own shares. Now, how does that differ, of course, from, from a common stockholder? Well, a common stock typically, you know, is out there. If there's common stocks out there from a common stockholder, well then I'm a, I'm a separate individual, I'm not the company, I'm an owner of the company, I'm a shareholder of the company. A treasury stock it has been reacquired by the company itself. Remember that the company has kind of individual rights and can own things and basically it's kind of like buying it back its own shares, it owns kind of itself there so it's a little bit unusual. How would we record that? Well. It's just like uh, the cash would be just like any other transaction. Someone would own the stock. They would be selling it for the market price. If, if someone owned Google stock, they would be selling it for whatever Google's trading for on the market. The corporation would go in and buy the stock from them. And that would mean cash would go down for the corporation. So it would be a credit to cash, cash decreasing. And then we would debit something. And if it was some other stock that we were buying, like if Google was buying Apple stock for whatever reason, for an investment purpose, then it would be a debit to an asset for the stock for the investment that was purchased. In this case, it'll still be a, a debit, but it's not gonna go to an asset account. It's gonna go to an equity account. So that's gonna be the difference in the recording. So the debit then, we're paying cash, we're debiting something, but we're not gonna debit an asset because we're buying our own self. So it's gonna go into the equity section, uh, which represents kind of the book value of uh, the corporation. And that means if we debit it, the equity section, remember, is a uh, credit balance. Credits will win. It's a credit normal balance section. If we debit the equity section, then we're doing the opposite thing to it. We're actually decreasing. We're lowering the equity section, so, which kind of makes sense because we paid cash. So we're lowering uh, the equity section. So if our accounting equation assets equal liabilities plus equity, cash is going down, equity section going down. No effect on net income, however. Now, why might a company do that? That's a kind of, again, it's kind of an unusual thing to do that. Why, why would a company do that? Well, uh, one, you can think about the effect of this happening. If we buy our own stocks off the market, say, say there's 100 shares out there of our stock on the market, and then we buy back, you know, 20, 20 shares of them on the market, 
Well, now there's only 80 shares out there on the market that are currently trading between other people. Other people are trading these stocks between themselves. And we just took 20 shares off the market. Well, that would mean that the outstanding shares, the ones that are still trading between other folks, should, you would think, go up in value. So we may, for whatever reason, want to actually increase the price of the shares that are currently out there. How could we do that? We can lessen the amount of shares that are out there by buying back our own shares. So we might be trying to find some optimal price for the market. Again, it doesn't have anything to do with our financial statements because uh, you know, our, we, haven't, we haven't done anything to our, our value other than pay cash for the stocks. But uh, you know, we, haven't, we haven't generated any more revenue or anything like that. We just bought back our own shares. So the, the shares that are still out there still represent the total company, but now there's less of them. And therefore, because of supply and demand, you would think that the stock price of the remaining shares could possibly increase. They, they might also be trying to do some strategic strategy like trying to avoid a hostile takeover or something like that. Or they may want to have more shares uh, that are, that are that on, on stock so that they can issue them in some kind of employee agreement. They might want to give some of these stocks uh, out to employees as some type of incentive program. And typically, if we give employees stock, it might give them more incentive to do well in the business. We might want to pay them with stocks in some ways to give them incentive to, to uh, invest their time more efficiently and be more invested in the company.